but still, if you'd like to try it and tell us what uh, sucks and what doesn't, we, we would appreciate that so we can give you a hands-on. And I think it also can be done with a drink. So, uh, right now is the time we could answer your questions, if you have any. We got an extra mic today too, so anyone will get the mic to here. Uh, is, is there a uh, way to uh, import skins, like via photo or something along that line? Uh, we're planning it uh, a bit later after the initial release. Um, we don't want it to do it at the start because. Uh, some people may choose not to import to import the skins we would not like to them. <laughs> uh, from from what we saw in the trailer right now, it looks like you were focusing on um, physics-based or side-scrolling games or a fusion of the two. Is it possible to do? other types that, that we haven't seen here, maybe top-down type games or something that was not one of those two genres that you kind of showcased here? Our goal is that you should be able to create anything that's uh, 2D. So uh, we are giving you a 2D physics playing ground and uh, some, let's say, rule set that will help, help you do some kind of Angry Birds platformer but also always run Pachinko, uh, Flipper style, and we want to add more, more and more on about that. We do not yet plan FPS, but as long as it's to be, you should be able to create in create area. Exactly. Actually, the fun part begins when you mix two styles. You can put a platformer guy and a slingshot at the same time, and then the fun begins. How do people, uh, how are they able to share their games? Like if I made a game and I think it's awesome, like how do I show it to other people and get the word out? How do I sort of spread it around? For, for now, we are planning it with uh, our uh, application. We, we, we have this uh, thing we call YouTube for games. And uh, this allows you to show your creation to, to other people. And uh, also get comments, get ratings, uh, or criticize other people. Stuff. It's built into the application itself, but as we told today, it's important to be on the existing networks. That's where we'll be able also to share instantly to the Facebook, or what is pretty unique on the mobile, we'll be able to instantly share a replay of what you did on the fa uh, on the YouTube, like from the mobile itself. And a lot of people are asking for a possibility to, to publish their games. This is not an initial plan because we don't want to be a developer tool but still it may happen sometimes in the future. So this is, this is always a pretty popular type of game, especially among game designers and developers. Um, what lessons, as recently as a year ago, I think Sketch Nation came out, Sketch Nation 2 on iPad. What lessons do you pull away from that that tells you you're going to be successful where they were? I think that the main uh, thing that we are different is uh, that we, we give you ways to create games, not uh, sketches, not uh, shared areas like Minecraft does it. Uh, uh, there are some, I think there's the creator verse thing that allows you to create this uh, uh, rigid body uh, vehicles. There was Cryon Physics Deluxe. Uh, and this simply tells us that people want to create such, uh, such things. And we want to first gamify the creation process and then to allow to create actual games, not just experiments. And we definitely try to take all the burden, all the difficulty out of it. It just should work out of the box for the casual player. Like, I mean, they don't know anything about rigid bodies, then they don't know what joints are. Mm, uh, so that's the difference. <coughs> experience that is really uh, comprehensible for a casual player. Okay. Um, <coughs> as, uh, outside of the friends networking, so if you're going to make a, friend, a, a game, show to your friends, they of course want to check it out, rate it, talk about that. So how, how would you like to promote a user to see more games 
without showing them like a lot of, I'm, I'm pretty sure there's gonna be like a lot of them are gonna suck. There's gonna be just creations that people make like just to try it out and publish. So how can you select those ones that are good? And if you're based on ratings, how how you make it, you make a game to to never being played by other users because your game sucks and you only saw the top 10 of them. Is there any strategy over there or? I think it's the same problem you have when you watch uh, YouTubes. Uh, you get your friends' recommendations, you see what's popular, what's trending. Uh, uh, probably uh, lots of people link something on Facebook and looking from the commercial side, there's the way App Store does it. So we can have staff picks, uh, uh, favorites, favorites for certain genres. We believe the tool set is there. We just cannot allow it to go wild because then, as you said, it would be over overwhelmed by some trash creations, probably. Yeah, and we have some plans to reward you for some time playing the trash creations just to tell us they are trashy, but to do some of the work for us for reward. But from the other point, as a creator, you, be, you, you will be rewarded when your creations will be popular. What are the what are the age groups or like characteristics of the user base you are trying to attract with the, for like creating the games? I think that uh, you are actually uh, in one of our uh, most important groups. Uh, we are thinking about people. Um, age 25 and plus, uh, and then uh, them playing with their children. So uh, if, you, if you have the same idea we had uh, when we were kids that we want to create games, this might be something cool you spend a few minutes to create a platformer for your friends. And if you have a kid, we have this idea about uh, having only, let's say, Nintendo violence. So this is something you can safely play with your son. I totally see myself doing some interactive fairy tale style game in five minutes just before he goes to bed. Why not? Why well, I just show him some short video or I just read? I encourage you all to read for the for kids. <laughs> but sometimes we may just have some interactive fun. <laughs> he says it's not going to be five minutes. <laughs> He has a hard kid, maybe you should help him make games for his kids. Yeah. <laughs> so then, uh, if your kid is not the one that goes to sleep in five minutes, uh, you can provide him with almost endless stream of uh, non-violent games. Uh, yeah. like. Actually, during one of the presentations, we managed to do two <coughs> game levels. One Angry Bird style, one very short platformer style in five minutes. That's possible, it takes skill, it's possible, but one of the keys was we are also willing to give you the choice of the time you are going to invest. You got five, maybe ten minutes, here you go. You got five hours and you want to do your own vision of how Mario should look, go ahead and do the whole Mario. We don't uh, I want you to create only games as a whole. There is a lot of possibilities. Some pl people do stuff that is not even interactive. I mean, they use the bricks to build some crazy machines that are not interactive. You probably saw in Minecraft, people did a working computer or working calculator with the stuff in the Minecraft. Hi. Um, so, so I just, just want to ask you to clarify a couple of things for me. So, uh, two things. So, um, early you just mentioned you want to gamify the, the game creation process. I'm wondering if by that do you mean gamify what you were talking about before, um, gamifying the sort of the leveling up and everything around the process, but the I'm assuming the game creation part of it itself is game creation, like you've got to stick a thing here and you've got to set up a rule here and that's all kind of the same. Is that correct? And you then you're gamifying the, the stuff around that, not that process itself? Um, and so that's question one and then question two is after, so after talking in your presentation about the um, uh, the way that you're um, uh, the, the problem of trying to get uh, a community built, uh, I'm not sure if I quite picked up on what you figured was the solution to that problem. Okay, so starting with the first question, 
we're gonna have all the mechanics we have mentioned, the user leveling, rewarding him, and ability to, to, to get uh, social with what he does. <coughs> but we also uh, <coughs> have a kind of a campaign for the editor. If you have uh, played a long, long time ago, you have played Incredible Machine, uh, if you have played Amazing Alex, um, I think recently, uh, we plan to give users, let's say, unfinished creations, giving them only certain kind of uh, uh, freedom as, and a challenge to accomplish a goal. And this is a way we want to uh, attract them to be creators. And if they feel they like it, uh, they can always uh, start from a scratch or with some basic set of rules. And uh, as for the second question, um, actually, we will have kind of community in game. It's just different from user base. The user base will be, I hope so, huge. But then the community, at least the active, will be just part of these users that want to share, uh, share like, or comment within the game. Because we'll be allowing for this. But then the main viral channel for us is so that you go out and say, oh, I will publish this to the Facebook. I want to put this trailer on YouTube. That's how we plan to use the existing communities to spread the word about the game and your creations. And probably most of our users will share their stuff either directly, oh, Jakub, look what I got here, or no, no this sucks. <laughs> yeah. Uh, or, or use Facebook or something like that. I use Facebook to recommend uh, videos on YouTube to my friends. I rarely use the YouTube recommendation system, whatever. I, I just send links via Facebook. That's the way most people are going to use it, but then when I want to comment on a video, I go to uh, YouTube and I put comment there because I want everybody in YouTube to see it, and that's why we also leave this uh, uh, possibility for our players to put comments, likes within the system. So you guys have, um, I mean, one classic problem with something like this, right, is your audience splits. <coughs> you have creators and you have players. So are you going to reward and um, give attributes to both separately? I mean, I understand you have the YouTube issue, right? YouTube does it, and most, a vast number more people watch than play. So what's your plan for dealing with that? And then also, I, I hear that you want lots of players and, and lots of responses, but what's your plan? Um, how are you guys integrating metrics and dealing with the fact that probably none of your users are going to act in any way like you think they're going to? <laughs> yeah. um. It's probably right that they will act different, but then we'll just adjust to, to how they really act. But the idea is to, the hybrid mode I mentioned before is, we want it to be both tutorial and a bridge before, uh, between uh, just playing and just creating. So you're pushing everyone to creation? Is that uh, the goal? We try, but not force. We are not doing it violently. There will be some uh, small incentives, uh, uh, probably um, our in-game currency bonuses, achievements, badges, that will suggest that you might go just a little better if you create something. Uh, if you don't want to, uh, we still uh, think you're a valuable user for us playing, uh, uh, sharing what you have played, uh, being a part of our community. But yes, we want to show people how cool is creating stuff. And maybe if you just play, you still might want to have <coughs> this cool avatar outfit that you saw somewhere. So you are going to maybe purchase it. So there are ways to monetize all those guys who are gonna, on a, going only to play and who are cool with them only playing. Any questions? So, yeah. um, there are two things here which might not seem connected um, because they're not at all. But the first part. <laughs> is when you talk about gamifying the whole process, um, are you going to take this sort of little big planet approach where people have to earn the very materials and tools that they would then use to make games? Like, you know, that's, that's one way to do it. <coughs> the other way is to give them everything at once. And the other question is, um, how do you, well, maybe you should tackle that first one first, because. Okay, uh, so. Uh, as for the first one, being free to play game, we are gonna to utilize the free to play model. I mean, you will have to pay some virtual coins for some of the stuff that you see in game. You can earn those coins by your time, or you can just buy a large amount of in game currency and unlock everything on start if you want. 
actually collecting the stuff in the little book planet, I didn't really like that. I, I would kill myself just to unlock everything at the start and go ahead creating, but it was not possible there. And the other question is, uh, let's say you're doing a, this is particularly important in a physics-based kind of game. Uh, let's say you, you have your, your physics-based game set up, and I'm wondering if you're going to make people sort of go digital on like, here's one physics scheme that's really forgiving, here's one that's really elaborate, like do they have to slide into a notch or can they, I just want it a little bit more responsive, can they, can they tweak it to that degree or do you have to fall into like a scheme? 